Okay, this is for the top stitching lesson, how to top stitch. So we have to repair the pieces first before you can top stitch. So we make a plain seam using your two squares first. You put them together. Okay, uh, if you need to pin them, that's always a great idea. I'm just going to use one pin. Okay, so the difference uh, that we're going to do this time, though, however, is going to be that you're going to use 5 8 seam allowance, which is this third line here. Okay, um, I am going to use for my stitch length, I'm going to make sure that's on an 8. It was not previously on an 8, but stitch length on the 8th. Okay, so I'm doing a 5 8 seam allowance, which is that third line. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start stitching. I'm going to back stitch at the top and the bottom of my seam. Take my pin out. Okay, so you're just sewing the two squares together. Bottom of my seam, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I do the back stitch there. Okay, so since you're using the white fabric for this exercise, I would, you know, make sure maybe uh, use a darker thread. Especially when you get to the top stitching, you really should. Okay. So I've got that, those two squares stitched together. So I'm going to uh, open up my seam and do finger pressing just for this. Okay. So this is your wrong side and then your other side is your right side with the pretty seam. Okay, so I'm going to take my rectangle and I'm going to tell you right now it's not going to fit exactly. Your rectangle is going to be bigger than your squares. Uh, I'm going to match Oops, I'm going to turn this around. One end's not even. I'm going to match my ends. Okay, there's no seams to match on this, so I'm going to match the ends. Pin that together. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to use three pins for this. Okay, so you can see I've got some overhang right there. So I'm going to actually trim that off just to get it out of the way. Don't need it. Look a little better. Um, you might, you probably don't have as much as I just had. I didn't really measure that when I cut it out. Okay. So now I'm going to sew the two squares I just sewed together to my rectangle, which I cut shorter. Okay. Um, again, I'm going to use that 5 8 seam allowance. So same exact thing. Make sure that you, um, Backstitch at the beginning and ends of these seams as well. Okay. So now I have basically that was the prep work for the actual act of top stitching. So let me just trim my threads out of the way because that's just what I do. Okay, oops. <laughs> All right. So here is the right side. You can see I've got the one long seam, I've got the short seam. I'm going to open up the seam that I just did and do finger pressing on that too. So you're going to open that up. Okay. So uh, I would recommend that if you do have an iron for the next few projects, you would really benefit from having that um, set up somewhere. Okay, so those are pretty much flat. So we're going to be top stitching on the right side, on top. <laughs> So, um, the first place I'm going to top stitch is uh, along this edge here of this seam. Okay, and then I'm going to do this side, an L shape, whoops, sorry, an L shape here and here. And then I'm going to be going from here to here. So, uh, the first thing you want to do on the home sewing machines at least is put your stitch length to a 9. Okay, usually you use a slightly bigger stitch for your top stitching. Because um, it usually is just a decorative stitch. Okay, so just a slightly bigger. It doesn't need to be real big. You don't want to go up to a 10. Okay, I'm going to line my edge of my presser foot up to um, the seam I made. And again, I'm on the right side of the fabric. So I'm going to line that up just like that. 
And I'm going to sew all the way down. Now you don't want to do a back stitch on a top stitch. Okay, so I'm just going to go on from here, keeping it lined up, my foot to that seam. Just like that. Okay, so that was my first top stitch. Oops, I got a little crooked there. Um, okay, but as you can see, I just lined it up. Oh, good. I don't know what happened with these stitches. Um, to my seam here, and went all the way down on that one lo long rectangle side. Okay, so next I'm going to do this L-shaped, and I'm going to show you, if I wanted to start on this side here, I can actually line up my presser foot on the other side of the presser foot. Okay, so on the left side of the presser foot. With this one, I lined it up with the right side like we've been doing, but I'm going to line up the left side of the presser foot on this one. Okay, right here to the seam here. Uh, that is also one fourth of an inch. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, stitch down, keeping it lined up. Hopefully, better than I did that first one. Okay, when I get close to that corner, I'm going to want to stop about one fourth of an inch away from that corner. Okay, pivot. Okay, so it's just like when you did the square practice. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish top stitching that. And again, I'm lining up the left edge of the presser foot to that seam. Okay, so that looks a little better. Okay, and I'm going to do the other L shaped. I'm going to use the right side of the presser foot this time. And again, it doesn't really matter when you're doing top stitch, either side does equal a one fourth. Okay, lining that up again. Okay, I'm going to stop about one fourth away from this other seam right here. Pivot, and then continue. And that is it. That is my top stitching. Okay, so you can see it kind of defines that seam there. If this were a little sleeve, for example, you'd have a decorative little sleeve around those seams. Okay, so this is what you'll be doing for the assignment. Fairly easy, just a little, um, you know, three different top stitches here. And that is it.